Met officers revealed racist, misogynist, and homophobic. Messages and imagery shared in a WhatsApp group of former Met officers revealed by Newsnight. Tonight, one man has been arrested. Once again, the spotlight is on the culture in the London Metropolitan Police. Uh, and the, the entire undertone is, is, is one of racism and, and misogyny. Tonight, I'll be speaking to the new man in charge of the Met who replaced Cressida Dick after the last scandal that brought disgrace to the force. Also tonight, the national grid can't rule out energy outages this winter. They warn it could be three hours at a time in extremists. Why won't the government follow France's lead and make a plan to reduce our consumption by 10%? I'll be asking industry experts and a Danish MEP. And Tom Bateman reports on alleged atrocities perpetrated by British troops in historical Palestine. They had no shelter. They were rationed to, I think, one pint of water a day. Britain should be brave to say, sorry, I did this. Good evening. Following Newsnight's exclusive investigation into a WhatsApp group of ex-Metropolitan police officers who posted racist and misogynistic messages and imagery, a man was arrested earlier this evening and is in custody. Rob Lewis, who's understood to have created the group and shared the most messages, had already been suspended from his job as an immigration official at the Home Office after Newsnight alerted them to some of the contents. He is being held on suspicion of offences under the Communication Act and misconduct in a public office. In a moment, I'll be speaking to the new Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Sir Mark Rowley. But first, here's our UK editor, Seema Kotecha's report. And a warning, it contains some disturbing and offensive material. The Metropolitan Police has faced scandal after scandal in recent years. Trust in Britain's largest force has been severely dented, and the new man in charge says he wants to change the canteen culture. We're about to show you some very disturbing racist, homophobic and misogynist content from a WhatsApp group of former Met police officers, some of whom have only recently retired. Up until the start of this week, content was still being shared on the group. Some of it is too offensive to show, but we are choosing to include a small selection to give you a sense of what was shared. The strongest of racial slurs are used or alluded to, like in this picture, featuring the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who appear regularly in the messages. We understand that even though there aren't serving police officers on the group now, there were several staffers posting up until recently, with some dropping off last year after the murder of Sarah Everard by a serving officer. Around that time, several retired officers scoffed at the stupidity of a police trainee who'd shared highly offensive material about the murder on his own phone. Have two mobiles, one says. Use a mate's phone, says another. They boast about removing their mobile numbers from police records while serving, so they couldn't be checked. So these are the most recent messages? Today and yesterday. I mean, this one is horrific. This is Dave Eden, a former police officer who retired in 2010 after nearly 30 years in policing. Throughout that time, he has collected evidence showing deep-rooted prejudice in the force and called out bad behaviour. The WhatsApp group contains some of the most vile content I've ever seen. It's hard to overstate just how offensive it is. There, there is frequent use of the, the P-word. Um, there are references to black politicians which are extremely unpleasant. Uh, and the, the entire undertone is, is, is one of racism and, and misogyny. Everyone on it used to be part of the Met Police's diplomatic protection group, 
DPG, now called the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Branch, those who guard ministers, embassies and parliament. To join the WhatsApp chat, Dave Eden says you have to provide your warrant number, the date you join the force and have two people vouch for you. He's been monitoring the group since it started in 2016. He says discriminatory material makes up about 80% of the content. You've been on this WhatsApp group for several years. Yeah. Some people might think, hang on a minute, why has this man been on this WhatsApp group looking at all this content? Because I collect it, because I collate so it, because I archive so it. Well, yeah, and, and there's a good reason for that, because the more that I collect, the more that I archive, the more that I present. But 40 years of being thrown out of offices, 40 years of nobody listening, 40 years of making representations to senior officers about behaviour, about conduct, that is why I continue to archive it. Because I will not stop until somebody listens. The Met says it contacted Dave Eden in the spring after first learning about the WhatsApp group. He says he doesn't trust the system to act fairly and not scapegoat individual officers. The force is now urging him to reconsider talking to them. If these are former police officers, why should we be worried? It doesn't matter whether they're retired or whether they're serving. We're introducing them into that culture and we're allowing it to continue. Newsnight has now identified the man who runs this group and is the chief poster of racist and offensive messages. He's been working for the government in an immigration role, a former police officer now attached to the border force. Rob Lewis makes his views on immigration clear in a number of posted messages. In April of this year, he told the group he's about to restart an immigration-related role. We called him to ask why he shared such offensive material and whether it was appropriate that someone with these views worked in an official immigration role. I'm just going to work at the moment, so I can't really give you the time. Well, we've been speaking to a whistleblower about a WhatsApp group with serving and former diplomatic protection officers on it. Hello? He's hung up. Newsnight shared the content of some of the WhatsApp messages with the Home Office, who told us it had immediately suspended a member of staff. It said, these messages are vile and deplorable. We expect the highest standards of our staff and have a zero tolerance approach to anyone displaying racist, homophobic, misogynist or discriminatory behavior. Where we are made aware of such behavior, we will not hesitate to take decisive action. While there's no evidence to suggest the WhatsApp group includes current officers, Newsnight has spoken to two serving Metropolitan officers to gauge their views on prejudice in the force. One told us he'd seen this racist picture being exchanged between colleagues in recent months. Another said leaders in the force underestimate the challenge of rooting out racists. This will be an uphill battle for the Met to eliminate this culture. Individuals need to be held accountable I made an example of to demonstrate to colleagues that these behaviours and ideologies have no place in the Met. I fail to see any substantial improvement within the organisation. The Met's new commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, told us he'd be ruthless in rooting out corrupt, racist and misogynist officers. In a statement responding to the content shared by former officers, the Met said, these messages are abhorrent and have absolutely no place in policing or society. Their behaviour erodes the confidence that the public has in the police, a confidence that the vast majority of us in the Met works tirelessly day in, day out to maintain and improve. Our revelations raise questions about the vetting of police officers and those working in government. Can we ever really know what the true feelings of people are? And in jobs where there is sensitive contact with the public, racism and discrimination can lead to unfair treatment. And that is deeply worrying. Dave Eden says he will be submitting the material he has gathered to an independent inquiry, investigating the Met and issues affecting policing. Well, this group um, tells me that the culture of the Metropolitan Police hasn't changed. 
And in fairness, it's not just this group. It's other groups. It's what I'm hearing out of the mouths of ex-colleagues uh, and what I'm witnessing all the time. So when Mark Rowley, Sir Mark Rowley, the new commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, says he is going to change the culture of the force, are you saying you don't have much faith in, in what he's saying? I, I'd like to think that he can do that, but then, it, then you know, there's at some sense, there has got to be some acquiescence to it in his past. And that is the problem. Because when you've got people that have been involved in this throughout their service, or even if they haven't been proactively involved, there's been silent acquiescence to it, then why didn't they do something before? Why didn't they do something at superintendent rank, commander rank? Trust the police, something many parents say to their children, and what many of us want to be able to do. The trust has been shattered by events at Britain's largest police force, serving Britain's largest city. How and when that trust can be regained is an open, and urgent question for the new commissioner at Scotland Yard. Seema Katecha, well, the new commissioner is here, the Metropolitan Police Committee, Commissioner at Sir Mark Rowley, who was sworn in just under a month ago. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. What do you make of what you've just heard and seen? Oh, that content's horrific, isn't it? It's, it's completely shameful for anybody, let alone somebody associated with policing or border force. Uh, and, and that's and we're taking a very different approach now. That's why you've seen within 24 hours of getting details from from SEMA and that great report, we've already made one arrest. We're going to be much more forceful in the way we see this as criminality, not just bad behaviour. Well, I was going to ask you, have you ever seen such vile material during your time in the Met? Because of course you were in the Met for a number of years, eight or nine, before you then went into another service and came back. Have you ever seen material like that? I, I spent the last six years, the last 20 percent of my policing career in the Met. Um, I think as a senior officer you have to be realistic that it's not going to be shared with you. It's our job as senior people to go after this proactively and that's why we're building a much so greater capability to do So you never saw anything like this? God, heard God, no, else. no, it's horrific. And did anyone ever come to you? You're a senior officer and really what that whistleblower there is saying is that you know at level, not as commissioner level but commander level, superintendent level, officers would come and say listen there's some really bad stuff going on. Uh, so I've never had anyone bring that stuff to me. I think the important thing here is about how do we, how do we change the way we deal with it? Because we've got a fantastic, the, the majority of our people are fantastic men and women. Look at, say, the policing of the uh, late Queen's funeral. But the leadership, the culture, the standards has allowed uh, too many people to behave in this way. And, we haven't, been, and we haven't been ruthless enough about this. And that's that what we're going to do. It's how these people are actually police officers in the first place with those vile views. Dave Eden, the whistleblower, says that you have been silent on these issues in the past. Do you dispute that? I've never met Dave Edens. He's got no knowledge about my career. Look, we're, ta we're tackling this. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of currently um, building and, and launching a, a, a massive new team, an anti-corruption and abuse command, that is going to take the proactive tactics we use against crime to take on the people who do these sorts of ghastly things in the organisation. Because I recognise if I'm to rebuild trust from the public, yes. The starting point is our integrity, and I have to take on those who corrupt us. Yeah. And, and did you and Cressida Dick, the person you took over from, ever discuss this kind of behaviour in the Met as you were ha doing your handovers? So obviously I had conversations with Cressida and Steve Howes, who's been acting in the meantime, and some of the scandals that yeah. have come out. I'm very much focused now on what I see today and what I need to do to fix the issue. i tell you why the, there is a problem, because 90% of officers uh, uh, disciplined for racism against other officers are still working in the Met. I mean, how can that be? So um, we've got uh, Dane Lewis Casey doing a report into how we look at misconduct at the moment. Um, I don't think that report's going to have, uh, have um, a pretty reading, frankly. We haven't, as I've said already, Kirsty, we haven't been ruthless enough at getting rid of these people. Right. So and I'm determined that we're going to. The, it, you remember uh, Stephen Lawrence's report by Sir William uh, McPherson on his death in the 1999 report defined institutional racism as the collective failure of an organisation to provide an appropriate and professional service to people because of their colour, culture or ethnic origin. What has actually changed in the Met two decades later? I mean, the litany of stuff that's going on here, the Independent um, Office of Police Complaints published in fe uh, February, culture of misogyny, machismo, bullying, discrimination within the chain, cross metropolitan police station, an investigation encouraged numerous messages about rape within WhatsApp and Facebook chat groups. 
homophobic comments, use of words that could be considered misogynistic, racist or constituting disability discrimination. Two Met police officers were jailed for taking photos of a body beside two female murder victims. And then a former Met officer, Anthony Smith, sentenced to 24 years in jail, found guilty of three, 13 counts of sexual assault and rape against three girls. At the youngest it's 13. horrific, isn't it? I mean, I mean, it is horrific, but I want to know what concrete steps are you going to be taking? You were talking about making officers use work phones. As we see there, that wouldn't make a blind bit of difference. So, concrete steps. So, first of all, we have to recognise that if we're going to be an excellent police force, we have to be honest about where we are today. We've let two groups of people down. We've let the public down, and we've let the good officers in the organisation down who see this going on and haven't seen the robustness and determination from leaders to sort it out. That's what I'm going to change. So we rebuild our integrity by firstly getting rid of the people who are undermining it. Secondly, by the way we then work with communities. There's a, there's a long journey ahead, but I've got so many great men and women. I know we will bounce back and we will take but, these but, people but, but on. But how should we know? Will we know in 100 days? Will we know in 101 days? What will actively happen? I mean, is it possible right now that there are police officers on the beat in London who shouldn't be in the force? And if there are, and there presumably by statistics there are, are we actually going to see officers removed from the force in so, 100 days? So you will see, over, over my duty, over my um, tenure, you'll see more people being removed from the force for these sort of ghastly acts. Because and different turn, kinds of recruitment. Because we're going to turn the, turn the stones over. And, and actually, it, it goes into vetting. It goes into how we look at, um, we, we're using new technologies to look to, to wash various records against officers' backgrounds to make sure we can do better vetting. There's a whole range of things we can do to be more assertive about identifying those who are causing us problems, at the same time as strengthening community policing and looking again at how we work with communities to tackle the issues that matter to them. Um, the new Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, said at the Conservative Party conference, it's wrong for police officers to take the knee and pandering to identity politics is a huge waste of time. Does the fact the Home Secretary expresses that kind of sentiment help or hinder your efforts with minority communities? I'm very confident that both the Home Secretary and the Mayor want Metropolitan Police to succeed and they want me to succeed in, in, in bringing that back. And I don't, I don't see any, any problems in that. So I've got a big job to do in taking on the people who are letting us down and also supporting the good officers who want to do a better job okay. supporting the public. But you want the public to have trust in officers. Let's just finish on stop and search. During the Conservative leadership hustings, Liz Truss said, I fully support stop and search. I think we need to use that more and we need to give the police the powers they need. And you will know that black people are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people. The Police Race Action Plan published just four months ago, which the, the Met welcomed, as all the other police forces welcomed, says, testimonies tell us that black people find these encounters, particularly stop and search, confrontational, stigmatising and humiliating. Is the Prime Minister wrong not just to support stop and search, but to call for more of it? Do, is more stop and search the answer to the way that the police behave and also to the way the people in the country think the police behave? Stop and search is a really important tactic in tackling violence. Sadly, violence falls differently across London. It falls differently on different communities, and we target where we use it. We do need to constantly improve how we work with communities so, so that um, we can do it deliver it in a way that they understand. In the last two months, in each of the last two months, we've recovered over 400 weapons from Stop and Search. There are young men being killed on the streets of London and we have to try and find a way of intervening. What we need to do better is work with communities so that we have a shared understanding, a shared plan about how we tackle those issues. But you do accept, that, or don't you accept, that there is actually too much Stop and Search and it's disproportionately aimed at the black community. It's not aimed at the black community, it's aimed at areas where there's high victimisation of crime. Sadly, if you're a young black man in London, you're many times more likely to be stabbed than if you're a white man. We have to protect people in communities and use these tactics. What I want to see is more working with communities to, to do these issues. And part of the trust issue goes back to where we started from. The trust will only come if people are satisfied that I am being ruthless in getting rid of the small number so, of people who let us down. So you said, just very briefly, you said you wanted to uh, radically improve this within your tenure. How long are you giving yourself and will you step back if you haven't achieved it? I will report month by month, year by year, the progress that we are making to and making whom? a difference. Um, Publicly? Oh, I'm, publicly, I'm held to account by the Mayor, I'm held to account by the Secretary and I'll report it publicly. We will make progress and we will sort this out. Thank you very much indeed.